Last time I bought an entry level bike it was 2009. It was a Trek 1.2, cost 600 pounds, with Shimano Sora on it. Inside this box there's a Scott Speedster 50, the cheapest road bike that Scott make. It has Shimano Touareg on it and it's 300 pounds more. 300 pounds more? Oh, cardboard saddle. It doesn't feel any heavier than the gravel bike, does it, from the other video? No, it doesn't feel very heavy. The group set looks okay because it's like black and stealthy. It does look a bit budget though, doesn't it? Well, it's got all this cardboard over. <laughs> you can't see it yet. Calm down. Shut up with this. 28 mil tires, Jimmy. You wouldn't have got that in 2009. Definitely wouldn't have. Can you remember what you did get? 20, 23. No, 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 20. Yeah, 23. There's a problem. There's no seat post. There. It's by there. You know, explain to the viewers why there's so much cardboard in our room. Now you've revealed more of the frame. That is. That looks amazing! It definitely looks better than the bike you would have bought in 2009. Yeah! Shift's so nice. Well, I guess when you only have like seven gears, it's not too much to ask from a group set, is it? I bet it's lighter than the gravel bike we did the other day. What do you think it is? 10.7. Oh my god. 10.1 to 3. That's very good. Thank you. Bear in mind this is the cheapest group set for road bikes that Shimano do as well. Do you have any idea how much the group set costs? 100 pounds. You can get that entire group set for 100 pounds, yeah. This one's 100 pounds, Claris is 200 pounds, Sora is 300 pounds, Tiagra is 500 Like it goes up by 100 each ish. I've just realised something. This is a rim brake bike, Francis. I like rim brakes. How good that is. <laughs> so, this is a Scott Speedster 50 alloy frame set, alloy fork, Tony group set, which is a seven speed mechanical group set from Shimano. Pretty basic. Tektro brake calipers, Synchros Race 24 wheels with an alloy braking surface, and you got Schwoll Lugano. 28 millimeter tires on there. Finishing kit is all made by Synchros, the sister company to Scott. You have handlebars, which, should we measure them? Are 42 centimeters, which is extremely wide for a size small. Alloy Synchro stem, alloy Synchro seat post, and a Synchro saddle. Exactly the same was the one that came on the more expensive gravel bike, which I'm quite impressed with. Oh, it has a double chain set as well. 165s. So why do they put a nice short crank on, but they put really wide bars on? It's very odd, isn't it? It is weird. I tell you the other thing I'm actually uh, not massively impressed with is the gear ratios. It's an 1128 cassette with a 5034 chain ring, which is fine for general road riding. However, I would prefer to see a uh, wider range. Let's chuck the bike on some rollers and see how the group set actually feels, how it functions, if it's clunky or if it's nice and smooth. Because I've got the feeling it's actually going to change really nicely. <laughs> Gears are so smooth, but the bars are so wide. You should see how, how wide this looks on here. They're so wide. Your shoulders are like here. <laughs> it's for the really technical bits on the road. I'm out of breath. How unfit am I? Now there's a few changes I'm going to make to the spec of this bike before taking it outside for its first ride. And these are things that I would generally change always when I buy a new bike because a lot of them are personal preference. Firstly, a saddle with a big cutout in the middle. This is a pressure relief channel. The majority of people get on better with a saddle that has a pressure relief channel. So this hole in the middle here, because we're not designed as humans to sit on a hard piece of foam. This basically means you're sitting on your sit bones instead at the sides and not the soft tissue in the middle of your legs, which um, can cause issues. Like I said a minute ago, the bars on this bike are too wide, 42 centimeter, too wide for most people, especially too wide for most people buying a size small frame. I'm gonna be changing them out to these, Dada RHM zeros, nice shallow drop, really compact. And you can get these or a variation of these for about 20 to 25 pounds, so really affordable. These are 38 centimeter wide, so the same width as my shoulders. Tires, these are Hutchinson Fusion 5 Performance. These are nice, supple race tires, make a huge difference to the quality of your ride. Whichever bike you put them on, I'm gonna be setting these up with tubes, uh, just so we have a constant with all the bike testing that we're doing, because this bike is gonna be used for some future videos. Last but not least, some new bar tape. Uh, this is 
excessively good, more expensive than most bar tapes. You can get good bar tape for 20, 25 pounds. This one's extremely nice from Silka. The bar tape that comes on stock bikes is usually not that nice and it's made of cork. The stuff on there is okay, it's thin, which I like, but it's a little bit slippery, so I'm gonna be changing it out. I have to change it because we're changing the handlebars anyway. So I'm gonna get on with this and take it for a spin. Gear changes are so smooth, so, so smooth. I like that, but the levers, how they feel in your hands is just horrible. Plus, you can't shift when you're in the drops because the button's too far away for your thumb to reach. It's not a nice one like Campag has. You can't change gear, I'm stuck. You have to go like this. Annoying. It does shift really smooth though. Campag Nodder has a button which you can reach in the drops. This is just a little button clicker on the side of the shifter on the inside and you can't reach it if you went one group set up from this, spent a little bit more money to Shimano Claris, you'd have a paddle which you could shift with. And I think that would be a total game changer. The bike is good. The frame is stiff and works. The geometry and how high the bars are isn't to my preference, but for a new cyclist who would be buying this bike, it would be a better position to be in. <laughs> Was the Speedster having a seven speed group set an issue on the hills? Not at all, not on this ride, and I predict not on an average bike ride out in the hills with friends. If you were going to race it, it would be annoying, or if you were doing a fast ride where people were attacking and that kind of thing, then yes, it would be a detriment because of the gaps in between. The actual range, is about the same as a normal double. Do you think that there is a sufficiently easy gear for climbing for normal cyclists? No. Thank you for that, Francis. <laughs> Historically, I think that Trek 1.2 that we mentioned at the start of the video came with a triple, which means it has a tiny little, you call it a granny ring in the middle, which gives you loads more range. This bike should have a much smaller small chain ring. Which kind of brings us back to the point I made when we were outdoors, if you spend a little bit more money. In fact, last year's bike from Scott, which has Claris on it, so the group set one up from Turney, has an extra gear. That still doesn't solve the potential issue of not having an easy enough gear for most people climbing that. No, it doesn't at all. So <laughs> please make bikes with smaller <laughs> chain rings, bike manufacturers. With everything on it being very alloy, was it a harsh ride? No, not noticeably. 28 mil, nice supple tires on it made a massive difference. 28 mils are big. Tire choice makes a massive difference in terms of comfort. So if the frame and fork is a little bit harsh, bigger tires, slightly less pressure. Happy days. At least relieves it a bit. Or hides it. Hides it, masks it slightly. <laughs> masks. <laughs> I jested that it didn't have disc brakes because basically everything in the entire world now has disc brakes. I would 100% rather ride rim brakes at that price point than disc brakes at around that price point because the mechanical disc brakes are <laughs> Perhaps I've been slightly unfair to mechanical disc brakes. You they haven't. can be done. You no, you they can be better if you're really careful with them, if you set them up with compressionless housing and you get some really good ones. But in the majority of cases, bikes you're buying stock don't have all of those things and haven't been set up as nicely. I'm happy with the brakes. Super hard brake pad compound, absolutely fine. This bike is much more expensive than the Trek that I bought all those years ago. 900 pounds. That's a lot of money. Where do you see from your experience of what is considered entry level in this, stage, in this day and age in terms of price? For Scott, it is the entry level. It's literally the cheapest bike they do. But that has changed from a few years back. The Trek that I bought, that had Sora on it. So technically a higher level group set with two more gears, it was nine speed. But the functionality of the new Tourney is probably better than the Sora was all those years ago. So you are getting a better quality and better functioning group set and a component tree for the price, because technology's got better. Over 10 years, or actually in your case, I think it's 12 years or something rather. Money's like, worth less. <laughs> you're, you're going, you know, it is going to cost more than it did back then. In this day and age, from what I've seen, 900 pounds is probably in the middle of entry level. Mm -hmm. I think you can probably still get stuff around the 700 pound mark, and it probably goes up to about the, the 1400, 1500 pound mark, mm -hmm. or what the bike industry is saying, this is entry level. We bought a 900 pound bike, 
and upgraded it. Or maybe what you should be doing is going to independent bike shops that are building bikes from frame sets and are just specking it. You're probably still gonna pay the same price, if not a little bit more. Oh, it's a tough one, isn't it? Mm. It's where you get into the secondhand bike market and there are shops like Cycle Exchange mm -hmm. building stuff to the spec people want. A nice bike shop might swap out parts for you if they're feeling generous. Mm -hmm. And it's the right size bars and the right saddle at least, because a you know, saddle with a pressure relief channel is no more expensive than a saddle without a pressure relief channel. These things are just small adjustments that could be made in the manufacturing process or the choices that they make in terms of what's specced on the bike. It's just up to the manufacturers to start doing it. Are we calling a 900 pound an entry level bike rather than a 300 pound bike from B Twin or Halfords. Is it sub entry level? Is it what, what's what's why are we not testing that? It looks like a bike, but it's not really a bike. Presumably, you're referring to the eBay bike that you bought. Mm. Because when you go that cheap with componentry, you do start to affect durability and how it functions in a big way. The Tony group set that's on here will last a long time. You don't really need to lube your chain that much and maintain it loads. It just keeps working. The eBay bike we bought, which was uh, 125 pounds total. <laughs> yeah, it was really cheap. The parts were breaking as we were adjusting them. There's an issue of safety, there's an issue of longevity. It's gonna cost you more money to replace them in the long run, so I think there's probably a sweet spot there. You don't have to spend 900 pounds, clearly. The bike you do get for 900 pounds is very good. Somewhere in between, there's gonna be a sweet spot where you're getting good parts still, but you're also saving yourself a lot of money. To end today's video, answer the question for us. Would you consider this an entry-level bike? Let us know what your first bike was in the comment section, and subscribe for more bike checks like this one on the channel.